Okay, this video is going to give us a quick overview of combat. It's quite complicated and involved in this game, more so than I'd expect for a game with a, a pretty simplistic rule set. Um, combat, a lot of it's pretty similar to everything else. That if you get if you attack a, a hex, you've got to attack all the units in it. You uh, you can. You don't have to attack if you don't want to. It's perfectly voluntary. Um, even if you're in an enemy, next to an enemy, there is no enemy zone to control any other concept like that. Um, you can only attack a unit once. Um, if you attack for, with a stack, you don't have to attack the same hex with everything in the stack. But every, everything should has to make an attack of some sort from that stack. Um, the six steps to combat. Um, first thing is you got to designate a hex in which you're going to fight a combat. Okay. The second thing is you need to do a supply check for your defender. There, there, there's a video on supply. Um, but basically you've got to be in supply in order to defend at full strength. The second, sorry, the third part of the process is computation of the combat adds. This is basically, you, you take all your, like your attacking factors, add up all your, the attack numbers, which are the ones to the left at the bottom of the counter, uh, and then you compare them to the defense, um, and you come up with a combat ratio. Now that combat ratio um, can be adjusted for several things, um, for terrain, for a start, terrain affects combats in, in lots of different ways, which we'll see in a, in a bit later. Um, you can also um, you can also have supply in the same way as the uh, defence. You can end up only attacking at half strength, and you can also have the effects of uh, support. Units like this support unit here. We've actually done some combats here um, with the aircraft. That plus one that it gives there is a plus one column shift on the on the computational odds. So it's a good thing to have. Um, the little four in the bracket says that that spreads a like a, um, an area of four hexes around it where where this attack. Um, actually the tap modifier takes place uh, it can also uh, units which are, can affect areas greater than two can also interdict enemy units when they try and move um next thing you want to do is you want to roll on the combat table let's just get me a combat Table. Right, eventually I find a combat table uh, and a cat. Try and get the cat to go away. So if you take your, your odds ratio, say your odds ratio was two to one, and then uh, you've got one of these aircraft support modules shifting you one to the right, so that gives me odds of three to one. Then roll two dice and I cross reference it. Say I've got a seven here. And cross reference it there's there's three columns here now the first column is your attrition loss and that's a number of step losses which are inflicted now the number to the left of the forward slash is the attacker and the number to the right is the defender so in this case the defender would take one loss you one step loss you then look at the uh, attacker column for your tactical result and the defender column column for your defender result you cross reference that against your terrain because a lot of terrain effects here so, so for example this terrain which is wooded if you got a tactical result of e it'd be ignored and a tactical result of e2 would become an E. So there's modifications to attackers and defenders tactical results. 
if we go give you a quick summary, AR attacker unit re retreats one hex and suffers two losses. D1 defender suffers uh, one or more loss. Um, D DR, DR2, DR3, defender retreats one, two or three hexes. E, E2, E3, one, two or three units may be placed in exploitation. Okay, we'll get, we'll get on to that in a minute. E and G, uh, player must roll the dice in no modifiers in the same column and apply only the attrition results the second time for both even if one side has been fully eliminated due to attrition. F. Defender remains in place or retreats one hex and suffers one loss. S. Defender remains in place and suffers an additional loss or retreats one hex. R. Defender may move a single one of his units that are not adjacent to enemy unit and that is located within two hexes of the defending hex. The selected movement unit may move up to half its movement factor. This unit can end its movement adjacent to an enemy unit, but not an attack hex. I'm not sure I really understand that. Um, but we'll look at that later when it happens. Now, other things you can do while you're attacking. Certain units have like elite statuses. These ones here are these little medals on the German side. Are elite status. Now, if you choose to declare that you're going to use your elite status couple of things come into effect. Firstly, when you're taking casualties, um, the side with the elite status must take the casualty from the elite unit. Now, there's a similar sort of thing that comes into play if you declare a, an armoured exploitation. If you've got two or more units, armoured units in the attack, you can say, all right, I'm going to do armoured exploitation. Now, at the same time, when you're taking your combat results, you have to take, if you're an armoured exploitation, you're going to have to take it from an armoured unit first. And if you've got uh, elites and armoured, you're going to have to take it from uh, either, and it's up to the, uh, the your, your opponent to decide which one it is. Now... Another type of attack you can make is a, a Soviet one, which is, is a hurrah attack. And that has to take place in the um, the tactical range of a, of a, of a theatre of operations chip. And that means that you can gain an extra E result. So say so you've got an E, that could become an E2. But you have to sacrifice... Uh, a step of armor to achieve that so that's a way of the russians basically just saying no we don't care about the losses we're just, we're just gonna try and get get as much uh, ground as possible another thing about elites if you're using an elite unit when you actually apply your Um, attack or defense thing you see all these color results here well when you when an elite unit say an elite unit was an attacker there I don't have to take the AR say I rolled on the on the three column I don't have to take the AR I could take I can take any other any tactical result which is in the same color so I could I could go for engaged I could go for E I could even go for E2 or E3 Okay, that shows that a D, uh, an elite unit can control the battle much more effectively than a normal unit. Next thing you do, when, once you've sort of applied all your attrition losses and, and gone for all these things, you start looking at exploitation. Well, the first thing you can do, if that if the defending hex is like empty, you can the attackers can move as, uh, as many attacking units into that hex up to the stacking limits. Um, defender, if all the attackers are wiped out, the defender could move units into the uh, vacated attacking hex as well. 
um, or if the attackers all had to retreat. So, so same thing. So it's either the, if either the attacking or the defending hex becomes vacated, there's a possibility of uh, an attacker or a defender advance after combat. Next thing you do, if you get E results, um, E results means you can move an attack in the exploitation phase, which occurs immediately after the combat phase. So, for example, here, this, this Russian exploitation mark has been put down and there's two units under it. Now, those units can move, but they can only move up to half their uh, movement allowance. And they can all, uh, e even if it was out of supply, it would still be able to move one hex. Once it's done that, it's able to attack um, again, going through exactly the same combat procedure. The only difference is there isn't a tactical attacker result at the end of that. There's only attrition and defenders tactical results now other things that affect attack um, allied units like the uh, Hungarians and the Romanians are, are restricted in the amount of attacks they can make if they what it effectively means is if they are the majority of units in a hex and they make an attack, you can only do that once. And there's like some markers right over here, uh, which you can put on the turn track to say you've made one attack by the Hungarians or one attack by the Romanians. Now, another thing that if these units are in stacks with um, like German units or Soviet units, if they switch sides, you, you can't just use them to to take up losses you can't just cast them aside any any sort of um if there's like one german unit and three romanian units and the, the romanians are aren't the majority in strength points you, you would have to take your losses from the german unit or the soviet unit first that's to avoid people from basically using these these allies as, <laughs> as like meat shields The only thing I really haven't mentioned is if you've got a Soviet hurrah attack or a exploitation, armoured exploitation attack, you can double your number of, of armoured units or that are allowed to exploit. So say you've got an E, an e result, that would normally mean one unit can exploit. But if you're doing an armoured exploitation or a hurrah attack, you can double that. Just remember, if it's, if it's a hurrah attack and you choose this option, you must take an additional step loss. There you are, it's quite, as I said, quite complicated and more so than I expected. But it's quite a, a, a neat system.